Up with me right now is a fellow who's very much involved in this process and knows what's at stake, Richard Shelby, the uh, Republican senator from the fine state of Alabama. And Senator, hey, very good to have you. Thank you, Neil. It looks like it really does come down to the wire here, but I didn't realize how much to the wire. You would have to get a lot done in the next couple of days. How likely is that? Well, we never know up here. They're, they're, they're beginning to talk, and then there's no talk. There's no talk. But it will take time, even even if there is a deal and of course a lot of us would like to see what a deal is what a deal is what it does to the american people what it does to the american economy and we haven't seen any particulars yet we hear a lot of stuff but so you're not one to say just run something by me and i'll sign it and everything will be hunky dory you want to see i want to see that it takes time. i want to see it and if it's more taxes more spending and more borrowing i want nothing to do with it okay uh, no, when you say more taxes does that include senator uh, you know, reining in deductions, write-offs, special breaks, allowances. That seems to be what Speaker Boehner has alluded to. You don't like that either. Well, I, 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 I would like that if we could lower individuals' rates. I have advocated tax reform, cutting out corporate welfare and all the, these uh, unnecessary deductions, as I'd say, for years and years. But until we get fundamental tax reform, let's don't raise people's rates. Let's lower their rates. Okay. Um, that doesn't seem to be in the offering. Uh, the, the first deal we're told is that one way, shape, or form, taxes on the upper income are going to go up, whether it's their rates or whether it's through limiting their deductions. Is that a foregone conclusion to your colleagues, despite what you personally believe? Uh, see that as the case? I'm not sure. I think uh, uh, we've had a few Republicans speak out and say we want a deal just about maybe at any cost. Uh, I don't think you should negotiate in public. Some of them are doing it. But I'd like to see what the real core caucus would do on anything. I'm going to oppose any, ri any rise in people's income tax. I've seen this movie, movie before. It's going to come back if it's a year or two years. It's going to be more taxes, and it's going to ultimately get to the middle class, big time. Now, that's something that Marco Rubio has been worried about, your colleagues, sir. One of the things that comes up is history, that every time Republicans have agreed to look at revenues, move on revenues, whether it was during Ronald Reagan or George Bush Sr., uh, the other part of that bargain, Democrats agreeing to cut spending, didn't materialize. And that's what you're worried about, right? Absolutely. I've been here before. I was here during the Reagan years as a congressman. The cuts didn't come. Uh, they were always in the out years under President Clinton. We were going to do them tomorrow. They never come. It's so always... you want to concurrently, with whatever deal you have, that it's there with whatever rev if, if we have revenues with that, not not a promise down the road. We're going to have to, otherwise this country is going to be just like Greece and half of Europe. All right, some fear this country will be like Greece if you guys don't have a deal by the end of the year. Well, I don't, Do you agree with that? No, I don't agree with that, but I think that we will work something, but I think to negotiate it, we, it takes two sides. The president's got to get involved. All right, that, that, the language you're right, sir, did change a little bit today when... I always notice when they're not attacking each other uh, out in the open before microphones in the press, then progress must be being made. That's what led to these rumors of a potentially imminent deal yesterday. Now they're back to sniping. Uh, Speaker Boehner and then Nancy Pelosi, uh, many others now going back and forth, which leads me to believe that things are falling apart. Uh, do you get that sense or, or what? Well, we, we see that uh, here that uh, they're negotiating, we're going to get a deal, and then we hear the fighting going on. If the fighting continues, uh, we're not going to get a deal. Uh, I don't want a deal if it's just the same old deal. That's not good for America. Do you think and do you worry, as a guy who's been around the neck of the woods a, a few years for Republicans, that they're losing their verve here, that they're running after the election with their tail between their legs, and they're giving in on everything? Some of your more conservative members, Senator, have said, you know, we lost lost an election, but we, we, we didn't lose everything we stand for. Um, yet, the, everything I hear talked about are concessions on the part of Republicans about revenues, but not so much about spending cuts. So where does that put us? I think you say it well. If we lose our core principles, that is, try to rein in spending, try to create, be the job creators, uh, we're going to lose our way as Republicans. All right. So do if that. you don't see even the makings of a deal, we're trying to give a sense of the structure right now, Senator, that you have to have the broad 
no, no. blueprint might be a strong word, but the, the, the outline of a deal within a couple of days, because anything later than that, it, it gets to be logistically impossible to get done by the end of the year. I think you're right on. It's going to take, if there is an agreement of some kind, it's going to take days to work it through, the details of it. But I don't believe we have a deal yet. Um, you know, the rap, Senator, is that Republicans get the blame if we fall off this cliff. Um, do you agree with that? I'm not sure. I, I think if uh, we fall off the cliff, and that's a term I think Chairman Bernanke made up, uh, if we don't get a deal, taxes go up, we could go into recession. The president's the president of the United States. He could pay for it, too. All right, so under his watch, whether it was his doing or not, you have a recession. Never good for an incumbent president. It's not, it's not good for the president, and I think that he could overplay his hand. Um, you think he is? I think he is right now. Whether he will make up for it and get real in the negotiation, we'll have to see. Nancy Pelosi said earlier today that what is Speaker Boehner whining about, paraphrasing here, we've already agreed to a trillion dollars in cuts uh, months ago. Um, I guess he's saying, well, that's a separate deal from this deal. Do you agree that that trillion in cuts that she's alluded to as part of the last time you guys were on the brink should be counted again? Oh, absolutely not. That's like double counting. This administration is trying to do a lot of double counting. Well, it's it not as work. if this city it won't is work or alien to that concept. It worked that way. It's bad, bad. So you wouldn't it's count that. Accounting. She's saying that, it, that it's not that to you. It's not to me. I don't want to double count anything. Okay. Senator, thank you very, thank very you. much. And you thank you, Neil. Very, very busy schedule. So if the senator is right, you've heard it there, that the, really time's a waste. And this is not an end-of-the-year deal. This is like maybe an end-of-the-week deal at the latest to get something together that both parties could agree.